Hi, welcome back to another edition of Lippers Fund Flows Insight. My name is Tom Rosine. Thanks for joining me today. Conventional fund uh, investors uh, took out about $16.5 billion out of the uh, conventional fund business for the week ended. September 21st, 2016. And this was just because investors were still a little bit nervous. They didn't know what the uh, Bank of Japan or the Fed was going to do with their policy. They all, both had policy meetings. In fact, Bank of England had a policy meeting as well. And really, I think everything was held constant. Uh, we, it turned out that the Fed decided to leave its interest rates uh, the way it was. We kind of knew that. I, I've been saying that uh, I don't think they're going to raise interest rates until uh, after the election. Uh, but the Bank of Japan uh, kept their interest rates negative. Uh, but they also came in with a new yield policy. They're going to try to actually change the longer end of the curve so that way they can start accommodating some of their banks so they can start lending a little bit more, making it so that they can earn some money. Uh, we had some discouraging news uh, in the beginning of the flows week, uh, and that basically was that we had the uh, retail sales uh, decline. It was the first time in four months that we've seen a decline uh, in retail sales. That was discouraging news. And also we had uh, new jobless claims uh, rise a little bit during the week as well. So I think that impacted investors, made them actually, you know, believe that uh, the Fed was going to hold on their, their rates, but they certainly didn't get a lot of confidence uh, in the equity market. Let's see how these news uh, issues came out and panned out into our fund flows uh, during this week. Let's take a look at the macro groups. Equity funds lost about $2.1 billion. Like I said, people were a little bit hesitant on getting into the equity markets. Taxable bond funds, though, took in money, about $2.2 billion. Again, that was the benefit of the Fed holding, uh, not doing any uh, rates in the uh, increase rates uh, in the interest rates. And then also we saw the uh, muni bond funds actually taken money again, a 51st consecutive uh, week that we've seen that, uh, about $0.4 billion, and money market funds continue to just be scrambled all over the place. Talk a little bit more about that later, losing about 17 Point one billion dollars. Well, that brings us to kind of the individual breakout. Let's see how equities panned out and what happened there. As I said before, we saw outflow about two point one billion dollars. This is the twenty eighth consecutive week. Equity funds have seen money come out of their coffers, and they had a return of one point nine four percent. So while the Nasdaq actually did very good on some of this news I was telling you about, it popped up. Uh, Dow popped up. Uh, Nasdaq actually had a record high uh, during the week as well. But again, investors were sitting on their hands. And it was a second week in three that we've seen plus side returns, 1.94%, like I said. Now, if we take a look at domestic versus non-domestic, domestic funds actually saw $2.7 billion in outflows. And it's the 33rd consecutive week that they've had money come on out of their coffers. On the non-domestic side, though, investors put money back to work. $700 million came into that group. Um, and it is the first week in 13 they've seen positive inflows. And they had a positive return of 2.04%. If we break that down a little bit, uh, micro views, if we take a look at classifications, large cap funds, as usual, getting the bejesus knocked out of it, $2.2 billion in outflows. Global equity uh, funds, though, took in about $700 million. Well, let's uh, take a look at what happened in the uh, ETF side of the equity universe. If we take a look at that, basically we saw that there was an outflow for the second week, and the second consecutive week, we've seen outflows $1.4 billion. So obviously authorized participants uh, were not all that confident with the equity market. However, as I said before, NASDAQ did pretty well. So we saw QQQ trust at the top. So that was power shares, $1.4 billion of inflows. We saw the spider Dow Jones Industrial Average taking about $844 million. But at the very bottom of the barrel, we saw S&P 500 lose money, $4.1 uh, uh, billion in outflows. And then we also saw the Deutsche X trackers. This is the MSCI uh, EFA uh, hedged uh, equity fund, basically lose about $715 million. So again, this is one of the times that we've seen authorized participants and retail investors actually behave uh, in the same manner, taking out money out of the equity funds, just not sure what the equity market was going to do. On the flip side, it brings us to the fixed income market. Fixed income investors actually took in money. Uh, the fixed in, uh, income uh, market took in money this time. It's the second week in three that we've seen money come into their group. $2.2 billion came in there. Uh, it's the second week in three that, that we've had positive returns, uh, only to the tune of about 0.50%. So not big numbers, but again, positive. People actually were a little elated that the Fed decided not to raise interest rates. And that actually caused some people to change their portfolio views a little bit. Um, again, we saw loan participation funds uh, uh, taking a little bit of money. Third consecutive week, they've taken in money. But really, how this panned out, balance funds was the big winner, taking about $1.1 billion. First week in eight that they've actually uh, seen inflows. We had uh, the uh, 
Corporate investment grade debt funds actually taking money, about $500 million uh, came into their coffers. And at the bottom of the barrel, people weren't willing to put all that much more risk or a long end of the curve either. High yield funds actually saw outflows, about $259 million leave their coffers. Let's take a look at what happened on the ETF side of the universe as far as fixed income funds go. $2.8 billion of inflows. This is the first week in three they've taken in money. How that panned out is we saw the iShares, iBox, investment grade corporate debt fund uh, taking about $960. $1 million, while the iShare 1 to 3 Treasury bond uh, saw about $705 million. And at the bottom of the barrel, we saw the JPM US dollar emerging market bond ETF lose about $141 million. This brings us to our kind of shining star uh, in the group, Muni Bond Funds. Muni Bond Funds for the 51st consecutive week took in money, uh, $406 million. Again, 51 consecutive weeks uh, that we've seen that happen. But it was the third consecutive week we've seen negative returns, this time to the tune of 0.10% loss, not a big deal. And the big uh, attractor of money has been, and it's been for many, many weeks now, national munis took in the lion's share of that money, $333 million. Uh, and when we take a, a deeper dive on that, we see it, they have had it for 51 consecutive weeks as well. Well, that brings us to our money market fund group. And we've been talking about this for quite some while, time. Pat mentioned last week that we believe a lot of the movement has been happening uh, because of the uh, change in money market uh, procedures and actually regulations. Uh, so we've been seeing a lot of movement. Doesn't look like a lot of movement here. Fourth consecutive week, though, that we've seen outflow, $17.1 billion in outflow. And how it broke up, taxable money market funds saw $13.0 billion in outflows. Institutional, and then we break that down a little bit more, institutional investors, for 9.1 billion of that versus retail investors pulling out about 3.9 billion. If we take a look though, tax exempt money market funds, still some big major outflows, $4.1 million. This is one of the groups that basically has suffered quite a bit from these new money market regulations. Uh, you know, the, uh, the uh, Fed, uh, not the Fed, the, uh, uh, the regulators basically came out and said, we have to change how money markets are going to be pricing. They're going to have a floating nav. And it was all institutional funds and that included the tax exempt money market funds. And so when we took a, a deeper dive and see who lost money this time, we see uh, the institutional money market funds had $48 million in outflows this week. That's huge. And then if we take a look at the institutional U.S. Uh, uh, money market funds, this is then a government money market funds, um, which is not going to have to have a floating nav. Saw $44.4 billion in inflows. So this has just been a confusing time period for the last several months as, as people are adjusting their portfolios so they can either have a floating nav uh, that they're comfortable with, but most of the people are saying we want to have a, a dollar struck nav. We do not want it floating and they're moving their money from institutional to government institutional type of money market funds. Well, if you want to do a deeper dive into your type of classifications, uh, equity, fixed income, money markets, munis, you can do a deeper dive by going to lipperusfundflows.com uh, and or talk with us next week when uh, we have one of our analysts talk about uh, you know flows and what's happening for that week. My name is Tom Rosine, thanking you for joining me. I wish you the best in your wealth planning and creation.